Yo guys, let's do another Sudoku video here. It's been a long time, and I'm going to um, definitely do another advanced one for you. This one's going to be focusing on the two-string kite. I'll have a link in the video where you can find more information about this particular uh, pattern or technique that you can spot in Sudoku. And what you can do once you find it, basically you're going to use it to eliminate a possible candidate. Um, in this particular technique, what you're looking for is one row and one column that will intersect each other and the properties of the row and the column are going to be that you'll have a possibility of a candidate in only two places in that row and in two places in the column. So on this particular puzzle, I'm going to turn on filtering for the threes. And now we're going to look for any uh, rows and columns that only have two possible candidates. So like if you look at the first column, there's three in that one, so we're just going to completely ignore that one. Column two, you can see there's a three here or here, so this column would actually work for what we're trying to look for. Uh, column, did I say column two earlier? Yeah, column two. <laughs> column three, there's five possibilities there, so this one is completely going to be ignored. Uh, column 7, you can see, yes, there's a 3 here or here, so that one will work. And then column 9, of course, there's 4 there, so that's not going to work. And then um, rows, if you look from the bottom up, this one's got 3, that's not going to work. That one's got too many, that one's got too many. There's only two rows here where only two possible places can have a 3. So let's first start with this this first column here. It's only got possible three here or here. And then we're looking for an intersection of a row. So like here, there's actually a row. Look at that row. That intersects with this column. But where this is not going to work as a two-string kite is where the intersection takes place, one cell from the row and the column should end up sharing the same house. So in this case, the uh, possibilities in the column would never land in this house where this 3 is from this row. So in this case, these intersect, but it's not going to work because you don't have a intersection where two cells end up in the same house. But if we look at this row here, and we go and focus on this other column that's only got 2 in it, you can see they intersect, like here's your column and here's your row and those are intersecting obviously so now what you want to check is let's let's go ahead and color these um, there's our row and there's our column and sure enough this is one cell from the row and one cell from the column end up sharing a house where the intersection is so in this case we have found a two string kite I'm gonna go ahead and color this so you can see a little more definition of what we're spotting here. So you'll notice uh, the threes, I was talking about how that they intersect and they share a house. You notice they're colored blue right now. And the other three from the column and from the row are colored green. Um, you'd also notice that this kind of does look like a kite. Like this right here could be like the tip of your kite. And this could be like the stick that like strengthens the kite, it forms the frame of it, and then these two green pieces would be your uh, like wingtips, outer sections of the kite. So you know it's not perfect as far as the kite shape, but it it definitely is um, somewhat forming that shape. Now these these two threes here are going to be foundational. Um, if you've seen some other more advanced Sudoku videos. Um, you'll see foundational cells and then you'll see like relational cells like these two here are going to be kind of like eliminators or uh, in other patterns they could be like claws or whatever but these these two like wingtips are going to be cells that will help each other eliminate while using these two as foundational cells so you notice this cell here is red or the three is red there because this is where you can eliminate a three and I'll show you how this works. Let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna go talk about this if this then that scenario because 
oftentimes that's what you're going to find when you find a, uh, you know, a X-wing, a two-string kite, a skyscraper. You're going to find a if this then that scenario. So in this case, we're going to look at these foundational threes here. A three would have to exist either in this row, for instance, the three would have to exist either here or here. That's the only two places a three could exist in this row. Same with this column. A three would have to exist either here or here. But we can form a if this then that scenario by using these foundational threes. So like let's let's go with this one here first. Let's say if a three exists here, then we know where a three could not exist. If a three existed here, a three could not exist here, and also a three could not exist here. And since we know that a three has to exist in one of two places in this column and one of two places in this row, if we've already determined that a three could exist here and we've ruled it out here, now we know this is the only other place left where a three could exist, right? And you'll notice with this uh, cell here, it can cite this cell here, which can also be seen by this one. Remember this kind of foundational thing I'm talking about here. So just kind of keep that in mind for a second. You know, we've, we've determined if this is a 3, that can't be a 3, and this can't be a 3, this would have to be a 3. So that's where your two places where a 3 could exist. And because a 3 could possibly exist here, this one would be ruled out. Now let's remove the coloring and let's go back. And this time, let's say in this foundational house here, let's say this would be where the 3 exists. So we're going to say if this is the 3, then again we're going to rule out obviously a 3 couldn't go here because there's only a 3 in one of these two cells. So if we've said the 3 exists here, it's got to be ruled out there. And also, since this 3 shares a house with this 3, if a 3 exists here, then this could not be a 3. And now that would only leave one possible place for a 3 in this row. And once again, see if a 3 is here, this cell cannot have a 3. So no matter what, if a, a 3 is here or here, this 3 can't exist. And these two let me remove the coloring again. These two cells act as the foundation to work off of these other two cells for this if this then that scenario. So now we know that no matter what, a three cannot exist here. So we're able to rule this one out so we can say exclude three. Now I know that's you know not too big of a deal, but sometimes in advanced puzzles you're gonna find that if you can rule out one possible candidate, sometimes that's the difference between solving the puzzle or being stuck trying to move on so I hope that helps some um, just remember when you find this that you're you're wanting to focus on the foundational cells and then you you rule out if this is one then that's not or if this is one then that's not and you focus on those wing tips of that kite to eliminate a candidate that they can both see if you have any questions about this shoot me a PM or uh, ask a question in the comment and I'd be happy to help out and I'll also upload more of these videos if other people are interested in seeing more examples of a two-string kite. Thanks guys!